hello students so welcome to the second lecture of on the section of hilbert smith operators so today we are going to see uh, that hilbert smith operator is compact right so last time we have seen the definition of hilbert smith operator so and some examples so let us um, recall the definition of hilbert smith operator yeah so what was hilbert smith operator if you recall uh, if h is for h is a separable hilbert space separable because we need a countable uh, dense uh, sorry countable orthonormal basis for h um, and t belongs to blh it's said to be hilbert smith if uh, for such basis u1 u2 and so on uh, this sum is finite that is summation n equals to 1 to infinity norm t u n square this is this series is convergent so we have already seen the definition of hilbert smith operator and we have seen some examples uh, most uh, easy example is that we have seen zero operator then second one we have seen uh, finite on finite dimensional hilbert space any bounded linear map uh, will be hilbert smith finite dimension uh, this is also the case with uh, compact operators on finite dimensional hilbert space any compact uh, any bounded linear map any linear map is uh, compact so then that uh, leads us to ask the question that is there any relation between hilbert smith operator and compact operator so yes that is the first uh, relation which we are going to see today that uh, if h is separable hilbert space separable we need to define hilbert smith op operator so if h is separable hilbert space and t is hilbert smith operator on h that means t belongs to blh is hilbert smith then t is compact so this is the result which we are going to see today right so let us start the proof yes so because hilbert smith is given so let us fix some orthonormal basis so this is the orthonormal basis so let u1 u2 and so on be the orthonormal basis for h uh, why we can list such uh, orthonormal basis because we are given h is separable uh, yes of course that is needed for defining hilbert smith operator such that and we have assumed that t is hilbert smith so for such an basis so for such a basis uh, summation n equals to 1 to infinity norm t u n square uh, that is finite Right. So we are given uh, T is Hilbert Smith. Now we want to show that T is compact. Recall what is compact operator? Uh, T from H to H is linear, just linear. Boundedness is also not required. It is said to be compact if for every bounded sequence Xn, if Xn is bounded sequence in H, then Txn has a convergent subsequence in H. Right. So this was definition of uh, compact operator. So we want to show that T is uh, compact, uh, but we are not going to show this by definition. What we have seen another result is the set of all Hilbert, uh, sorry, set of all compact operators is closed in BLH. That means uh, all the limit points are in KH. So if Tn is a sequence of compact operators such that Tn converges to T, if all these are compact, and this Tn converges to T in BLH, then T is also compact. So this is that is the result we are going to use to show that uh, T is compact. Also, we are going to uh, use another result that if T range of T is finite dimensional, then uh, T is compact. So all these results we have seen. Um, I hope you recall it before proceeding further. Okay, so let us start. So uh, suppose this is orthonormal basis for H and because it is Hilbert Smith, so this sum is uh, finite. So this series is convergent. Okay, so now uh, since uh, this is orthonormal basis for H, uh, if you remember in the first unit, we have uh, those uh, equivalent conditions, five equivalent conditions. If there is orthonormal basis, the second one was every X in H has the Fourier expansion. So every X in H can be written as x equals to uh, in terms of this basis summation n equals to 1 to infinity in a product x u n uh, product with u n so that means this series converges to x so because it is orthonormal basis every x can be written as this the series converges to x so we can write like this so limit uh, 
k tends to infinity uh, summation n equals to 1 to k if this series converges to x that means uh, as k tends to infinity x u n u n this equals to x right as k tends to infinity uh, this equals to x so that that means that means uh, I can write this in other way also. So summation n equals to 1 to k, this finite sum, x u n u n. I can, instead of using limit, I can write, write like this. This converges to x. This is another way of writing, as k tends to infinity. So same thing, this sum equals to x, that means this series converges to x belongs to h. That means uh, this, this sum when k tends to infinity that equals to limit equals to x or we can say that this converges to x as k tends to infinity and now what we know is um, t belongs to blh we know so t belongs to blh that means t is continuous bounded linear operator right we know this is continuous and linear Right. So t is continuous. So because t is continuous, we know xn converges to x, txn converges to tx. So what we have is t of summation n equals to 1 to k x un un this converges to tx as k tends to infinity. The reason is uh, t is bounded linear that is continuous linear. So xn converges to x, t, t of xn converges to tx. Uh, but t is uh, also linear, so continuous linear. So by linearity, what we have t is continuous and linear. So if t is linear, then this t of this sum is nothing but uh, t goes inside. So sum of t of this, right? t of x alpha x plus beta y equals to alpha t x plus beta t of y. So this is al like alpha. This is scalar. So this will be summation n equals to one to k. Uh, this is scalar so this will x u n t u n converges to t x as k tends to infinity right but that means what so that means uh, limit if I don't want to write like this if I again write like in terms of limit so limit uh, k tends to infinity uh, x u n T u n equals to T x. So as k tends to infinity, the limit this equals to T x. But that means what? That means this. Right? This, this means, uh, sorry, here I forgot summation. Summation n equals to 1 to k. Yes. So that means uh, summation n equals to as k tends to infinity we have summation n equals to 1 to infinity x u n t u n that equals to in fact t x right so we have this so this much is uh, the logic behind the next step right okay so now uh, we proceed so for m equals to 1 2 and so on for each m belongs to n define uh, t m x tmx we we just define the the sequence of uh, partial sum so we take this n equals to 1 to m x uh, un t un so we take this but uh, we truncate it for each m we truncate this uh, sum up to only first m terms so for all x belongs to h we define tmx to be this sum right then what we observe is uh, that where is tmx so tmx this belongs to so tmx is nothing but it is a finite linear combination so all these are scalar so it, it is a finite linear combination of t uis so that means tmx belongs to the span of uh, tu1 tu2 tum right? n equals to 1 to m so tu1 plus uh, xu2 times in a product x u2 t u2 and so on so it belongs to the span of this and uh, so what is uh, the dimension of the range of tm so tmx belongs to this so dimension is so it is finite dimension 
it is less than or equals to m because it is finite dimensional each tm range is finite dimensional so each tm is a finite rank operator uh, if uh, for all m so we know that if uh, range is finite dimensional then the operator is compact so each tm uh, is compact for all m the tm is compact so right so tm is compact now what we just show that this tm converges to t and then t also will be compact so we want to show that tm converges to t so what we do is we take tm minus t x square which is nothing but uh, t minus tm because anyway it is inside norm so uh, for each x t minus tm x and then we take the square of the norm right so right so this is nothing but let us uh, see what is so tx tx is summation n equals to 1 to infinity x u n t u n minus tmx this is finite sum n equals to 1 to m so first m terms are removed so the our sum begins from uh, n equals to m plus 1 to infinity x u n u n square so that is less than equals to we can take modulus uh, norm inside so that is less than equals to norm of uh, this thing but we know that norm of uh, lambda x equals to mod lambda norm x so less than equals to when we take the norm inside this is a scalar so this is mod x uh, in mod of inner product x u n and then norm t u n square okay. so now here we use uh, holder's inequality for p and q equals to 2 Right, so holder's inequality uh, is summation mod a and b n. Uh, this is less than equals to summation a n square raised to one by two and summation b n square raised to one by two. Right, but here we have square and therefore this will be removed. So we use this inequality here. So that will be summation n, e n equals to m plus 1 to infinity mod x u n uh, square in a product x u n square. And so this is the first sum. This is first term and then this second. So summation n equals to 1 to infinity uh, norm of t u n square. And by Basel's inequality, we know n equals to 1 to infinity mod of x in a product x u n square that is less than equals to norm x square. Uh, this is even smaller only uh, terms from m plus 1 to infinity so this is by Basel's inequality this is nothing but uh, norm of uh, less than equals to norm of x square and this as it is and now uh, we take supremum so taking supremum we want to show that tn minus t tm minus t tends to 0 as m tends to infinity so taking supremum over all x this is true for all x in it so taking supremum over all x with uh, norm less norm of x less than equals to 1 so this when we take supremum uh, we know the definition of operator norm how do we define operator norm we have defined like this t equals to norm t equals to supremum of uh, norm t x such that uh, x in h and uh, norm x is less than equals to 1 so when we take supremum over all this we get norm norm of t so this is t minus tm x norm square so when we take supremum uh, we get norm of uh, t minus tm and supremum over all x with norm x less than equals to 1 so this is less than equals to 1 so this term this quantity remains and why that tends to 0 because this is the tail of the series we are given t is hilbert smith here is where we use uh, t is hilbert smith so in the beginning yes we are given uh, this so because t is hilbert smith the series is convergent and if the series is convergent that means uh, the tail of the series that means after finitely many terms the whatever the sum is there that becomes uh, smaller and smaller so this is the tail of the series so summation n equals to 
m plus 1 to infinity norm of uh, t uh, un square. So this, this converges to 0 as um, not n but uh, as m tends to infinity sorry this tends to 0 as n is just index so as m tends to infinity this terms uh, this sum becomes smaller and smaller because it is tail of the series so that means what we we have shown is tm converges to t as m tends to infinity and each tm being finite rank operator is compact we know that and therefore we also know the result that uh, if there is a sequence of compact operators converging to t in blh then t is also compact so by that uh, results uh, we conclude that t is compact provided t is hilbert smith so every hilbert smith operator is is compact so what we have shown so let us denote the set of all hilbert smith operators uh, here we have used the notation c2h this is the nothing but set of all Hilbert Smith operators and uh, if you recall the notation for set of all compact operators we are denoted by kh so this is the set of all compact operators and then this notation we already know this is a set of all bounded linear operators so it, so kh a set of all compact operators and c2h this is sometimes also denoted as b2h and this is also denoted as uh, b0h and this is some standard notation right so every hilbert smith operator is uh, a compact operator so set of all hilbert smith operator is a subset of uh, uh, com set of all compact operators now whenever we get anything which is subset uh, there are natural questions when one asks what one asks is like uh, blh this is a vector space kh is this a subset of all uh, linear maps and uh, then we ask that whether it is a, a subspace or not it is first it is subset then we ask the question whether it is subspace or not so we are going to consider this so uh, now this is subset but the question is whether uh, this is a subspace or not so if we are given s and t they are hilbert smith then whether s plus t is hilbert smith or not and similarly for alpha belongs to k what about alpha s alpha s is hilbert smith or not so this is the first exercise uh, to show whether it is a subspace or not uh, given to hilbert smith so if s and t are hilbert smith what we have is summation n equals to 1 to infinity s u and norm of s u n square this is convergent and t is also hilbert smith so we have summation n equals to 1 to infinity uh, t u n square uh, this series is convergent what we have to show that s plus t is hilbert smith so what we show is this summation n equals to 1 to infinity s plus t u n square we want to show that this series is convergent so to prove this so somehow we have to uh, i mean uh, dominate this by these two terms summation norm of s u n square summation plus norm of t u n square some constant times and then because these two are finite this sum is also finite similarly alpha is not uh, difficult it's just alpha mod alpha square comes out so then this is not only a subset but it is also a subspace of uh, uh, compact operators the space of compact operators right so this is uh, the second lecture the next time we'll see the uh, see that uh, uh, if t is uh, hilbert smith then uh, it's adjoint t star is also hilbert smith and uh, also we'll see if this is subspace then can it be uh, can some norm be defined to make it as a norm linear space okay so i hope uh, this is clear if there is any difficulty do let me know thank you